connected worldwide can be a hassle. Our next guest makes it easier for you by connecting you to over 1 million wireless networks worldwide and continuously growing. My first experience with his company, I was sitting in the airport in Tokyo and I was able to find Wi-Fi thanks to Boingo. Got online, got my business done, and was relieved dramatically as I was uh, wandering the world aimlessly sometimes, it seems. The CEO of Boingo and chairman, by the way, is Dave Hagen. Dave, welcome back into tomorrow. How are you, sir? Doing great, Dave. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to have you on because you're always being innovative. You're always literally connecting us to the world. And even more so this year at CES because starting next year, you're the boss. You are the chairman of CTA, the Consumer Technology Association, uh, following in Daniel Pigeon's footsteps, who already thinks he's being pushed out the door. He still has this year. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, exactly. I'm vice chairman this year. <laughs> well, right? but yeah, it's kind of automatic, right? You're, you'll be well, chairman we'll, next year. We'll see year. how it goes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I don't think it's ever not gone that way, but we'll just, yeah, I don't want to don't jinx Don't add you. pressure. Yeah, right. right. No pressure. No pressure. But either way, we certainly want to continue to have you on the program, but there'll be that added pressure now as, as uh, hopefully chair of CTA for the next couple of of years where this will be your baby among other things so first of all before we get into boingo what you'll what you do in your part-time right talk about uh, ces this year and, and the excitement that you and the board and, and everybody with the cta must be feeling well it's amazing so we've had <coughs> year after year just a bigger show than the year before and i think we're up to 2.4 million square feet of yeah. ex uh, exhibition space we now have tech east and tech west so it's expanded beyond just the convention center here. So the show is so vibrant, and it's just the centerpiece of innovation, which is what drives our economy and drives, I think, improving the world, right? All the new things that we're using, all the technology that you use and you talk about on your show, Dave, that all comes from innovation, and it's all featured here at CES. And one of the most important things, and, and you're a perfect example in terms of your company being not only a very active uh, CTA member, but uh, you don't have a device. You know, it's not just about consumer electronics and, and boxes and gear and stuff anymore. And while that's still very important, and there's still obviously, I'm sure the vast majority of exhibitors are showing things, the companies like you and, and Uber and Lyft and Google and Amazon and whatnot, they're great services, they're software, they're, you know, they're things that we always need, and like in your case, to get us connected. So thus the name change from Consumer Electronics Association to, Co to Consumer Technology Association really makes more of a difference, and especially to folks like you, because it's like saying, hey, d don't leave us out of the picture. We don't have a device. We're certainly active in tech. No, that's exactly right. See, the Consumer Electronics Association was it shows kind of the roots of where um, the association grew from. Yeah. But clearly today the umbrella is much larger than that, and we represent all technology companies. Any company that's trying to innovate, trying to disrupt markets. So we thought changing the name to Consumer Technology Association better represented the current view of the of the organization. What well, we do it makes perfect sense. So now th that being said, let's bring us to what is Boingo doing these days. So What's new and what, uh, what's got uh, the buzz happening here at CES from the Boingo standpoint? Well, the world uh, of, of Boingo and the world of Wi-Fi and wireless has changed so much over the last few years, really driven by the iPhone coming out in 2007. Mm -hmm. So we moved from a laptop-driven business to a uh, uh, handset-driven business, a smart-set-driven business. Yeah. Smart uh, smartphones, 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 tablets. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. And so instead of one-tenth of, of the population of any venue connecting, now it's almost everyone is getting connected to the Wi-Fi networks. So because of that, we've had to innovate and strengthen and build much more robust Wi-Fi networks than we ever did in the past. Yeah, and, and sucking up bandwidth has become an amazing challenge, I'm sure, for you and your partners, right? Right, so smartphone usage... Uh, is now over about five gig per month, which was just unheard of a few years ago. Yeah. No one would have believed that we would have that kind of consumption but from the palm of our hand, right? right? But back then they were using their phones for phone calls. Correct, exactly, and, uh, which and no now, one, right, right, who does that? Yeah, uh, you never call me, Dave, exactly. why is that? I'm I sorry, right. we text. We text, <laughs> right, that's the world. <laughs> and so because of that, we have to build much more robust wi uh, Wi-Fi and wireless infrastructure networks to handle that load, to also handle just the sheer number of devices that are connecting. So we launched uh, a program called Smart Networks. It's our new evolution of the technology of Wi-Fi mm -hmm. that we're, we've now launched in about 10 of, of our major airports, and we'll continue to roll that out across our network. And it is really taking into effect this new world that we live in with all of these devices being connected 
people sucking mass amounts of bandwidth through it, watching video. Yeah. You see all the periscoping going on here? You yes. know what that does to a network? Oh, that's, that, that's the killer, of course. And you guys, are while you're pleased that you're able to provide that service, it's like, yeah, but what about the people that are just trying to check their email? You know, the bandwidth is never enough. And that's know? part of the smart platform is that we have the back-end systems now that we can manage that traffic oh. so that we can help make sure that the person who's just doing email gets a great experience, but the person doing video is getting a great experience as well. So that's all part of the new platform that we've that we've done. That's awesome. And of course, certainly a challenge. Uh, and, and earlier, you talked about uh, being disruptive with certain technologies. And of course, Boingo being a, a founding member of the new Disruptive Innovation Council. I mean, who would have thought that that would have been yet another council as part of the association? But that makes so much perfect sense because it is disruptive. And that's not in a negative way by any means. It's disruptive to the, st to the sense that the industry is changing and so many things have to happen for you to help your clients. No, that's exactly right. And we think disruption in, in some cases may have a, a bit of a negative yeah. uh, definition, but we don't think that way. Uh, certainly at the Consumer Technology Association, we think disruption is important. If you think about everything that has been innovated about, usually someone gets disrupted along the way, but at the end, it builds markets, it builds the economy, it builds great end user services. So it improves our lives, it improves mankind, but there is some chaos along the way. Yeah. And so the council was created to make sure that we clear the path, if you will, and make sure that innovation and, and disruptive innovation is enhanced in this country. And somewhat manage the chaos, I guess, right? A absolutely, <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and use time on Capitol Hill to make sure that our mm -hmm government leaders understand that disruption isn't necessarily bad, that great things can come out of that disruption. Well, promise me, Dave, that you'll stay in touch with us so that we can get updates from you on a regular basis. You know, let's get you on. It doesn't have to be CES before we see you again and uh, and find out what else Boingo is doing and, and adding to your million plus wireless networks. I mean, that's, that's awesome in and of itself. And I've been bragging on Boingo ever since Tokyo many years ago. Appreciate that. When you guys saved me, you know, like, you know, I was able to get on and it was like, this is great, you know, I'm communicating with the world. I'm not in the dark. You know? And and we continue to do in our worldwide travels. It's like, first thing we do is look for Boingo. Great. And if I the hotel it. doesn't have Boingo, we'd stay somewhere else. I love that. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> Thank gotta, you, Dave. Got to do it. Appreciate Dave it. Hagan, the chairman and CEO of Boingo, B-O-I-N-G-O. -O. Hmm, sounds like this should be a song or something almost like it. But Boingo.com, and we'll link you there, too. you got to check them out. If you're not a member, a client of Boingo, you got to be. If you travel especially, my gosh, there's no other way to go. Check them out. Dave Graveline bringing you further into tomorrow from Las Vegas and our CES 2016 edition, our 21st year here. Proud of it. Stay tuned as Into Tomorrow continues right here on the Advanced Media Network.